Today I have some more really cool things that I'm going to show you on my Wheelock and Firelight voice evacuation fire alarm demonstration board. This is a lot and there are some significant changes since the last system test. So let me go ahead and show you them. As you can see I have a vintage simplex set up here. I was originally planning on installing this alarm, the simplex 2902-9739. However, once I started installing it, I realized that this cannot be mounted on your traditional double gang back box. It can only be mounted on a special simplex back box. See, there's only two holes, one at the bottom and one at the top. So after I already wired it up, I realized, hey, I cannot mount this to the board. So I quickly improvised and made this setup. It's my old simplex light plate. However, I took a, the strobe from the other strobe plates and replaced the light in it with the strobe because the light on it was broken. So this is now a strobe plate. And as a speaker on the inside of the alarm, I have a Simplex 2902-9732 Life Alarm speaker. So it is a speaker strobe that I have set up today. Going over this alarm you saw in the last system test. And then right here I have a Siemens ZH-MC-W horn strobe. And I have a nice piece of black duct tape on the inside of the horn so that it's nice and quiet, which will allow you to actually hear the voice evacuation message. So this is a speaker strobe, which plays an actual voice to evacuate the building. And this is more of your traditional fire alarm horn strobe which just makes loud noises and flashes. So, well, both these flash, but that just makes a loud noise and that is an actual voice. So that's the setup when it comes to alarms for this system test. It's really cool. And if you have no idea about anything I just said, well, you'll get to see it when they go off here in a little bit. Going down, there is one big change here. However, we'll talk about this later in the video. And then going down below that, there's only one other change and that is the conventional pull station. I decided to go ahead and install a Simplex 299-9138 all metallic pull station. So these are very durable and this is how you would manually activate the fire alarm system in a building just by pulling one of these. So we'll pull that today and then I will demonstrate this. For the first time ever during a system test on this YouTube channel, I'm using linear heat detection as an initiating device. And what is that? Well, that is what this is right here. It is a linear heat detector. So linear heat detection, also known as LHD, is an automatic fire detection technology that uses a cable designed to detect heat along its entire length. The inner workings of the cable consist of heat sensitive material such as polymer or fiber, which changes its electrical resistance when it's exposed to heat. So the high temperature will basically connect the circuit. Every initiating device on a fire alarm system will essentially connect or break a circuit in order to trigger the alarm. So LHD can be used in warehouses, tunnels, power plants, or other facilities where your traditional point type detectors may not be suitable. So it's great for long narrow areas where your standard heat or smoke detector might miss the fire because it's too far away. So this specific detector is made by ProtectoWire and as you can see it's type EPC 155 degree fixed temperature which is its regular rating. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this lighter underneath the wire and the heat will melt things within the wire which will connect the circuit and sound the alarm. All right, I only get one shot at this, so here we go. Wow, the wire almost caught on fire. I'm surprised it hasn't gone off yet. Yep, there we go. Do not use the elevators. May I have your attention? 
attention, please. A fire emergency has been reported in the building. While this is being verified, please leave the building by the nearest exit. Do not use the elevators. May I have your attention, please? A fire emergency has been reported in the building. While this is being verified, please leave the building by the nearest exit. Do not use the elevators. May I have your attention, please? A fire emergency has been reported in the building. While this is being verified, please leave the building by the nearest exit. Do not use the elevators. I have the Siemens alarm wired up so that when I push the silence button, the entire alarm shuts down. And this one, the strobe is wired separately, and I have the strobe as a non-silenceable circuit, so it continues to flash even when I silence the alarm. But as you can see, the wire turned black where the alarm tripped, and I'm now going to have to replace this entire wire if I want to reset the system. So while that's activated, let's pretend that for whatever reason the alarm system was silenced, and there's still a fire in the building, and people still need to evacuate. So we'll go ahead and trip an automatic fire alarm device, like this pull station right here, and re-alarm the system. Here we go. Fire, fire, pull. May I have your attention, please? A fire emergency has been reported in the building. While this is being verified, please leave the building by the nearest exit. Do not use the elevators. May I have your attention, please? A fire emergency has been reported in the building. While this is being verified, please leave the building by the nearest exit. Do not use the elevators. Alright, so if we look on the panel, we should have two alarms. Yep, the pull station in the north basement. And the conventional heat detector that's in the upper garage. And that's just a demonstration on how this fire alarm control panel can um, differentiate between the different points on the circuit on the initiating device circuit. So that, that strobe continues to flash. We'll go ahead and reset this pull station before we reset the heat detector. There we go, just like that. I've gone ahead and taken the cover off of the protector wire box, and as you can see, it's pretty much just a class A circuit, and that has to be wired in to one of these modules here, as this is an addressable fire alarm control system. I've gone ahead and replaced the old burnt protector wire with some new protector wire. And while I was doing that, I did power down the fire alarm control system just so that this vintage strobe right here wouldn't have to keep flashing for minutes on end as I rewired in the new protector wire. And that means as soon as I powered up the fire alarm control panel and after it initialized, it returned back to its normal condition. As you can see, it says system all normal. And that's because everything on this fire alarm demonstration board is now reset. So with that, I'm probably going to close saying that if you found anything in this video interesting, definitely rate, comment, go check out some of my other videos because I've made a lot of videos on other cool things within the fire alarm, life safety, and emergency notification fields. And definitely subscribe because I have a lot of really cool future videos coming that I know you're going to like. So thank you for watching, rate, comment, and subscribe, and have a great day everyone.